In the past few weeks, we started a two-part series entitled Identifying the Antichrist, in which we built a biblical qualifications checklist against which we would test potential suspects. When we began, it didn't take long to discover that there was a foreign and fallen god of old that is a beast behind the man everyone knows to be the Antichrist. Our first test subject was Apollo from the Greek pantheon, who was a 100% match. And in this week's message, we will test Nebo from the foreign and fallen gods of ancient Babylon. And as a bonus, I will be revealing a prophetic dream that I had about both the man and the beast who will possess him. And then next week, I will be revealing the man himself. Stay tuned, because it's about to get interesting. Thank you for watching I Believe X. You've now been marked in him. All right, we're going to start with the review. This review is from our two-part series, Identifying the Antichrist to Come. Make sure you check that out. Okay, but here's a short review. We concluded, because the beast comes out of the abyss, that the beast cannot be a human. Biblically speaking, humans were only sent to Hades. All non-humans, the foreign gods, the powers, the principalities, and the powers that were behind the kingdoms, the previous kingdoms on the earth, those are the, the beings and the entities that were sent, biblically speaking, to the abyss. The locusts come out of the abyss. The demons who are foreign gods of old are begging not to be sent back to the abyss. Okay. The beast comes out of the abyss and the dragon is chained and sent to the abyss as well. But never biblically speaking, do we see uh, a being, a human being sent to the abyss. Our conclusion is, is that the beast is a foreign and fallen God of old who is behind a human and possesses a human or incarnates as a human uh, who is known as the man of lawlessness or the Antichrist. This is the foundation and the cornerstone to our understanding and, and differentiating between the beast and the man of lawlessness and the who, who is and will be possessed by the beast. Okay, let's go on. Now, the beast has seven kingdoms or seven heads. Revelation 17 reveals he has seven heads. Okay, the eighth king, who is the Antichrist, or the being behind the Antichrist, is out of one of the seven. Of those kingdoms, five have fallen. Okay, both out of those kingdoms, or the eighth king, he says he once was, okay, he once was, now is not. John was speaking when the Romans ruled the world, the civilized world, and the pantheon, the gods of Rome, which are really a copy of the Greek gods, were ruling the world. He said that he's now is not yet will come so he know we know that he's an ancient or foreign fallen god who was not ruling during the time of the romans or part of the roman pantheon okay but he once was so we know that he was a god or a foreign god or a fallen god which are now known as demons okay that ruled over one of the previous five kingdoms because he once was let's look at what this looks like pictorially here is the beast with seven heads and the the, the beast itself is the eighth king who rules all the heads, okay? But more specifically, the seventh head. The first head is the Egyptian pantheon, or he's from the Egyptian kingdom. The second head is the Assyrian kingdom. The third is the Babylonian, the Persian, okay? Then we have the Greek, okay? And then we have the Romans. And then finally, we have the New World Order in Revelation 13. We see there is another kingdom that reappears and takes over the earth led by the eighth king who is the king or the power over the seventh head this final kingdom that appears on the earth okay now here's the way way of looking at it uh by a table okay we have seven heads let me get my mouse over here we have seven heads the egyptian we have five king revelation 17 10 says five have fallen out of the heads, we have the Egyptian, Assyrian, Babylonian, Persian, and Greek. These are the five that have fallen. One is, which is the Roman, and then one will reappear and is what is yet to come. Okay. We're also told that the eighth king once was, now is not. So he, we know that he ruled over one of these five fallen uh, kingdoms and is part of one of the pantheons of one of those five fallen kingdoms that have fallen and he once was, but yet will come. So we're going to see he reappeared. So... We naturally started first with the Greek kingdom, and we studied Zeus and Apollo. But why Zeus? Because many people don't know this, but biblically speaking, Zeus is revealed to Satan, and Satan is revealed to Zeus. So you might say, where? Okay. Well, in Revelation 2, John, speaking to the church in Pergamon, says that Satan lives 
in Pergamon and has his throne in Pergamon. The only throne and altar in Pergamon was the altar of Zeus. We know that that altar was excavated by the Germans in 1904 and moved to Berlin, Germany. Exactly 10 years later, from 1904, World War One broke out from the epicenter of where that, that altar was. Then they rededicated it in 1929, exactly 10 years before World War II started. We see a prophetic pattern. And then they literally shut down the Pergamon Museum in 2014, destroyed the altar. They say they destroyed it. I don't know what they really did with it. I don't think they destroyed it. And they recreated a panoramic version. You can see it online of that altar. Uh, and they started that construction in 2014, which if that is a prophetic pattern, which we see do, do see for World War III, we're looking at World War III in 2024, exactly 10 years after the, after the, the uh, destruction and the revamping of it in 2014. All right. We learned that Zeus also, when he fought the Titans, as well as when he raped Dionysus' mom, he turned into a dracone. We believe that the dragon is his original body. With the, the statues you see of Zeus is actually his masquerading. The Bible says that the dragon masquerades. That word masquerade in the, in the, in the Bible means to shapeshift. Check out our message called Shapeshifters to know more about that. Okay, we see the seed of the serpent. Okay, in the beginning, it was prophesied at the fall of man that the son of the woman, who is Jesus himself, revealed as Jesus, would crush the head of the son of the serpent. Okay, who we know is the son of Satan. So, so the Satan is the serpent. But now, because we know that Zeus is a shapeshifter, just like Indra, who is his equivalent, is a shapeshifter, it now explains why we have a talking serpent in the Garden of Eden. He shapeshifted into a serpent. Apollon Apolly, is the son of Zeus, so he is the seed of serpent. He did qualify here. He's 100% match. We started with Apollon. We see the Antichrist is a rider with a bow. Apollon is actually the inventor according to Greek mythology, okay, of archery. He's always depicted in all of his statues with a bow, okay? The Bible says that he's now is not, okay? We've, we learned that Apollon, okay, was not adopted. There's only two Greek gods that were not adopted into the Roman pantheon. That's Apollon and Dionysus, okay? So when John or Jesus says to John, he now is not a part of the Roman pantheon, it explains that why Apollon was not adopted into the Roman gods. All of, all of the gods were, except for Apollon. They only had two, 12 original, the, the Romans did. Most all of the Greek or Roman gods are actually Greek gods. It's the same pantheon, by the way. But Apollon, okay, is not adopted. So our conclusion was, is that Apollon was thrown in the abyss at the fall of the Greek empire and was judged and not just punished, but judged and condemned and thrown in the abyss and is actually in the abyss now. Apollon is. Okay. Now, this explains why we see Apollyon, the destroyer, who is now the uh, king or the ruler or the angel of the abyss, is now in the abyss. We believe that Apollon is Apollyon is the demoted and condemned same being as Apollon. And this explains how he comes out of the abyss. So our conclusion was that the son of Zeus, who is the son of Satan, prophesied from Genesis 3.15, is a 100% match. Okay. Now, just as the, the gods, and we see Apollon has been judged and even condemned. Whenever God judges a kingdom, he also judges their gods. Okay, we see in Exodus 12, I will pass through Egypt and strike down the firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the Elohim or the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. In Numbers 33, we see the Lord had executed judgment against their gods. And the, after the Greek kingdom, it looks as though the prince of Greece who probably was Apollyon, the same prince that Daniel wrestled with, was probably Apollyon, after the Greek kingdom must have done something, where he was condemned to the abyss and is now the Apollyon of the abyss. So in this message, we're actually going to look at the, that concludes our review. We're actually going to look at the Apoll Apollyon of old, the, his Babylonian equivalent, you say. But why Babylon? Because Revelation is all about the wrath of Babylon the Great. Okay, The entire book of Revelation is about, the and the wrath of God is, against the Babylon the Great, which means that the gods of Babylon are still ruling and rule the world. And Christ is coming back to judge and condemn not just Babylon and their bloodlines and all the people they rule through, but the gods of Babylon, just like he did when he judged Egypt. So Revelation and the wrath of God, Revelation is all about the judgment of Babylon. So we should see both Zeus and his son, Satan and his son, within the pantheon and the gods of Babylon. And it's revealed 
that Satan has ruled the world. Notice how it says, the Bible says, he said to Jesus who did not dispute it, the kings of the, the world have been relinquished to me, they have been given to me. Paul says that he is the God of this age. We see Satan ruling since Babylon, the entire earth. Out of all the gods and foreign gods and fallen gods, Satan took over, we believe, during the times of Babylon and since Babylon, which actually have find their roots all the way back to the Tower of Babel, which is, we have, we can get into more details. So anyways, this is why we're looking back to Babylon, okay? Now, ironically, the Babylonian gods, out of all the pantheons, which all have ancient Sumerian equivalents, the Bab Bab Babylon, the gods of Babylon, are actually the same as the ancient Sumerian gods, even the same exact names. All the other pantheons have different names and different stories, whereas Babylon has the actual existing stories of the ancient Sumerian gods. We see Enlil, Enki, and Marduk. And in the in Enuma, en Enuma Elish, we see how Marduk gains power, takes the powers of Enlil, becomes the god of the gods, and receives the tablets of destiny. And he is the storm god. He's the same god that we see in, uh, as, uh, as Zeus the storm god, the god with lightning, the same god as Ju Jupiter. We see Satan has ruled and his name has changed through all the pantheons, but is still ruling the earth and is about to be condemned and thrown into the abyss where Apollyon, his son, is now. All right? So the roots of Babylon go all the way back to the gods of Babylon, and we're about to look into that a little closer, okay? Now, in Daniel, it says the principalities of Greeks, the princes are the sons of the gods and the kings are the gods or the actual gods in the pantheon themselves as revealed in Daniel 10 and 13. Okay. So we see in the Greeks, we see the, the prince of Persia, which we believe is Apollon, uh, and Zeus is the, one of one of the gods, but the chief god of the Greek pantheon. And in Babylonian times, we see that Marduk, who is has the same exact features, same exact powers as Zeus, is the god of the of the babylonians and he too has a son or a prince that is revealed in the bible okay but marduk is actually the babylonian chief god he's also known his title is bel later variants are baal which means lord but his specific title as god or chief god of the babylonians is bel and his name his actual name is marduk okay the bible reveals in the Hebrew, he is named as Merodach. Now, many times you don't see this in translations, only in, for example, the New American Standard Bible, you see Marduk's name actually mentioned specifically. Most of the time it's Bel or Baals, but Marduk is there in the Bible. You can see him. He is the God worshiped by the Babylonians, named that as Marduk. Marduk is his name, just like God, Elohim, his name is Yahweh. Marduk is the Elohim of the Babylonians. Here also, you see Bel is used three times in the Bible. He is the chief Babylonian deity of the Babylonians. And uh, it is Bel is the shorter version of Baal. Baal is mentioned 80 times. Bel himself, which is the chief god, uh, and not just Lord, but actually the specific chief, his title uh, is mentioned three times. That is Marduk. When we see Bel, we see Baals. We are talking about Marduk himself, who is Satan himself. Jeremiah prophesied against both the Israelites uh, and Babylon, the fall of Babylon, or not the fall, official total fall, well, the fall of Babylon, but the punishment of the gods. In fact, Jeremiah spoke more about Babylon than anywhere else in the Bible by far. You can see 174 times. And then once again, we see Babylon coming back and being mentioned again in the book of Revelation. So Revelation, Jeremiah is prophesying about the fall of Babylon and the gods of Babylon, which are Marduk and even his son Nebo. Now watch this. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 50 verse 2 says, Announced Babylon will be captured. Bel, that's his title, the chief god, okay, will be put to shame. Marduk, his actual name, will be filled with terror. Okay? We see them being punished, okay, in the times of Babylon, in the Babylonian kingdom, okay? Not, not, not condemned to the abyss because Satan's still ruling. Apollon gets eventually con uh, uh, condemned, but Satan still has managed not to be condemned. He, he'll be condemned to throw in the abyss after, okay, after the wrath is poured out on Babylon, okay? But it'll actually be Marduk, Marduk. Jeremiah 51, 44 says, I will punish Bel in Babylon and Isaiah. And here's where we see Nebo, his son. This is the Antichrist, the original Antichrist from the original ancient Sumerian pantheon. And the Assyrians know him as Nabu, but biblically speaking, his name is Nebo, okay? It says, watch this, Bel bows down, that's Marduk. Nebo, his son, 
stoops low. Who is Nebo? Even in Strong's, they admit he, this is the divinity, Nebo. Nebo is actually the Assyrian god or the ancient Babylonian, ancient Sumerian god, Nabu. This is the son of Satan. Okay. Now, I had a dream about Nabu. In my dream, I saw the man of lawlessness who is a leader on the earth. I'm not going to tell you his name, but next week I will reveal who I saw in the dream. In the dream, he had a godlike dog and this dog attacked the earth and then he was resisted on some level, but he had a he had a, a dog, like a godlike dog and he attacked the earth and then the dream ended and I knew that that was the Antichrist, but he had a dog. So in my search for that dog, I actually found that Nabu, here's a seal of Marduk on the right, his son Nebo or Nabu on the left. And look what Nebo is standing on. A power, a dog, an entity that is a godlike dog, a divinity that is a dog with two horns. This is the dog that I saw attacking the world just before the Great Tribulation started or right at that time. Okay. That was waiting for the command of the man that I saw. This was the clue that I was given in my dream. The man, the, the man I saw was possessed by Nebo and he's still using this ancient God, this, this ancient dog. Now notice he's standing on the dog. That means that it's serving him somehow. It's a power that he utilizes. Marduk is also standing on the being or the entity called Mashusu. Mashusu notice has two horns and is a dragon. Mashusu, both of them, including the dog of Nebo, including uh, Nebo or Nabu, all of them are standing on Mashusu, who actually looks like a ship that they're on, okay? Which is, I believe that both Mashusu as well as the dog are ancient alien technology powers. Notice how the dragon gives his gives the beast his power and authority. The, the dragon gives the beast his power and authority, okay? So we see that actually Nebo is actually given Mashusu later in, myth, in ancient Sumerian and Babylonian mythology, which totally explains why we see the dragon giving the beast his power and authority. So watch here. On the left, we see Marduk here with Mashusu. Here's another seal that's found in ancient Assyrian seals and reliefs, which is in the Mesopotamian region, which is Shinar, biblically speaking, or ancient Sumer or ancient Mesopotamia. We see Mashusu here. But notice, I want you to notice that Marduk, who is the ancient Satan, has a being that he rides on that has two horns like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon, okay? Speaks like a dragon. Now, some say that he was the servant of Marduk, but some translations, archaeologists came to kind of believe and scholars believe that he rode the winged dragon. And I believe that the winged dragon is a power or technology or ships or ancient technology, which is potentially spacecraft or ships, some kind of power, but it's from the dragons or dr draconian old power. Okay. And so is the dog that I saw in the dream that attacked the world. This may be AI type technology. All I know is that Nebo, the Antichrist, the power behind the Antichrist, the man who will sacrifice his body to Nebo on the earth once he comes out of the abyss as a release from the abyss, is standing on this dog. And we see Marduk standing on Mashusu. Okay. And then later we see that Mashusu is given to Marduk. And I'm going to show you a quote here. Revelation 13 says, I saw the beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns. This is the beast out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Here's the servant that serves now Nebo, but originally served Marduk. How do we know that? It says he rode the winged dragon, who's also known as Searush, uh, which is Mashusu, that originally belonged to his father Marduk. Here is the entity that has two horns like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon. This concludes our message on Nebo, the, be the beast of Babylon, who we believe is the Antichrist of old, dating all the way back to the ancient Sumerians and more specifically, the pantheon of the Babylonians. Next week, I will be sharing more specifics about the dream that I had and more specifically, the man who the beast will possess, the man that I saw in the dream, who is known as the Antichrist. And I will be looking at other dreams that other people have had and see how it all lines up and how it all comes together. When you see what we see, you are going to get chills and be absolutely blown away with what God is revealing to us, his people here in the last times. God bless you guys. I hope you guys have an amazing week and we will see
see you next week. Thank you for watching I Believe X.